All right, so in this video, I'm gonna give you seven ways on how to make oil painting more simple. All oh, right, welcome to Paint Talk, the weekly show where I sit and just kind of talk about oil painting. If you're new to the channel, then welcome to Paint Coach. My name is Chris Fornatero, and I'm here to help simplify oil painting so that you can get better faster. So oil painting is one of these things that I feel like a lot of people make more confusing and more complicated than it needs to be. And for people just starting out, it can be very confusing. You hear a lot of different things. You think you gotta do this, you think you gotta do that. So I thought it'd be helpful to give my best pieces of advice for how to make it more simple because if you can make it more simple it's going to be more fun and you're going to get more out of it and you're going to get better faster so let's jump on in with tip number one which is don't worry about creativity now i know this might sound weird he's like oh chris we're doing painting then painting's creative and should i be creative Yes, but at first, really focus just on getting better technically, developing your skill and craftsmanship. You could have one of the coolest ideas for a painting, but if you don't have the actual skill set to execute that idea, then it doesn't matter. You know, your skill set is just another tool like your brushes or your paints. Just like you couldn't go and execute a creative idea without any brushes or paint, you can't without technical skill. And I see a lot of beginners too quickly trying to reinvent the wheel or trying to make their paintings different or interesting just kind of for the sake of doing it. Or they feel like, oh, like that's part of the point is I gotta be doing something different. And I always tell them, you know, just try and be very good. That will make you different right there. Johannes Brahms said, without craftsmanship, inspiration is a mere reed shaken in the wind. So don't feel like every single painting you do has to be the answer to the meaning of life and just worry about technically getting better at painting. All right, tip number two is don't think that there are secrets of oil painting that you need to figure out in order to get better. I feel like this is true with a lot of things. People are always kind of looking for, you know, the secret. Like, what's the secret? You know, what do you, what materials are you using? Are there, are there special materials? You know, what should I be doing to get better? Like, what's that one thing? And like most things, there isn't a one thing. There isn't, there aren't special materials. There aren't special ways of doing things. I mean, if you think about it, the masters that made these great paintings a long time ago didn't have nearly as good as materials as we have now. So like, don't think that, oh, I need to get these certain materials and that's gonna really level up my painting. Um, you know, materials can help, but they're never gonna like make you better. Now, if you had to choose something as the secret to painting, I would probably say it's practice. And it's a secret because I feel like only the people that have put in so much practice really understand the power of practice and how if you focus and constantly show up to the easel and constantly paint there's going to come a time where you kind of lift your head up and look back at where you used to be and you're like wow like i've come a long way and i feel like i know so much more and it's almost going to seem like magic like how did i get that good it's, it's just practice it takes time but you will be able to do things that you didn't think you could do all right tip number three Keep your materials and your process simple, especially when you're starting out. And when I say starting out, I'm saying at least the first five years of starting to oil paint. You'll get yourself some canvas, uh, linseed oil, some paint thinner, some paints like the primaries and white, and just start painting. As far as brushes go, you don't need tons and tons of brushes. I have a brush set that I recommend to beginners and they love it. Like, five or six brushes and you probably don't even need that many. I say this because I see a lot of people starting out that get really hung up on materials and they think that materials or even processes, you know, certain ways to paint, certain kind of advanced methods or techniques are what's going to bring their paintings to the next level. All right, tip number four is don't do something just because you saw someone better than you do it. Only do it if it really makes sense to you and you understand it and you can see how it would solve an issue that you are having. I definitely fell into the trap of doing this when I was first starting out and I would see these really good painters and I'd feel like, oh, like I gotta do this or that because they're doing it. If I wanna be good like them, then I should be you know, doing what they're doing. But that's not always the case. Now, if I saw what they were doing and it made sense to me and I could see how that would help my work, then I would do it. For example, even right now, I'll see a lot of oil painters that are more advanced than me using a ton of colors on their palette. But I'll go and do that because that doesn't make sense to the way I think about things. There are a whole bunch of other painters that are a lot more advanced than me that use a very limited palette. And I see them and I think, oh, that makes sense to me. You know, that approach and that kind of method clicks in my brain. And so I gravitate more towards that and I look more towards those painters for my guidance. It's not that one way is right or one way is wrong. It's just a certain way clicks for me. But understand that when you see very advanced painters with very specific 
you know, set of materials and a very specific way of working and how they build a painting, understand it took them a long time to develop that method and to dial in those materials. And it's specific to them. And I'm talking decades. And over time, you will dial in your own process and your own specific way of working and what materials you like. And you will change things and add things when it is necessary to get a certain thing that you want in your paintings. Just don't do it just to do it because you think you need to do it. Always know why. All right, tip number five is don't get tricked into thinking more detail or complex subjects are better. I would really encourage you to paint simple subjects very well. A big problem I see with beginner painters, and you know, I did it as well, I was always reaching for painting more complex subjects because I felt the more complex it was or the more detail there was would make it a better painting. And that really wasn't the case. And looking back, what I was doing was I was trying to mask my deficiencies in the fundamentals of not understanding value and color and simplification and all that stuff by just piling on detail or choosing very complex scenes to try and, you know, like wow the viewer, like, look, whoa, look at all that stuff in that painting. And, you know, it doesn't matter how much stuff is in that painting or, or how many little details if it's not put in well and you don't understand how to do it. And also, I feel like there's something to be said with being able to pull off a very simple scene. Some of the best paintings I've ever seen are extremely simple and I look at them and it's just like, how did they do that? Like, how did they take such a simple subject and make it look so good? All right, tip number six is don't get confused trying to follow a bunch of different great painters. You know, with the internet, it's very easy to gain access to a lot of very, very good painters. And like I talked about before, they all have kind of different ways of doing it. If you don't really understand what's at the core of all their teachings, which is the fundamentals, I really believe that any great painter's method relies on those core set of fundamentals. And they all have different ways of handling them or getting to them and using them. But when you're just starting out, you don't really know that because you don't have a strong grasp on those fundamentals. And it's easy to get blinded by techniques and materials and, and, and process and not get at what is really making a painting work. I mean, this happened to me. I was trying to follow a whole bunch of different plain air painters when I was trying to learn how to plain air paint and I could never gain traction and make steps forward because I would always see somebody new and seeing them do it this way and that person does it this way and I would just kind of get confused. It wasn't until I kind of just took a step back and, and focused just on the fundamentals and not a specific person's technique that I saw improvement. All right, and the last tip is learn from your failures. You know, don't avoid what you're not good at. Run towards it. In the past, I've had a lot of students that will come up on an aspect of oil painting that they're not good at. It could be a certain subject or a certain fundamental and, and I'll see them try and avoid it. And I understand painting can get very frustrating, but you really gotta lean into that and turn those weaknesses into strengths. And you can't let them get you down. You have to, you know, fail your way to success with painting. And don't ignore them. The last thing you wanna do is keep getting reps doing the wrong things and building wrong habits. So stop and assess your paintings and think about what you're doing wrong and how you can fix it. Doing a bad painting doesn't feel great, but don't let it be for nothing. You know, Use it to get better. If you don't stop and analyze it and, and figure out what went wrong, then that painting was really for nothing because then it's just a bad painting you didn't learn from. At least make it a bad painting you can learn from. I always say fall in love with the process, not the end product. Really enjoy the process of painting. It's not about producing a nice pretty picture that you can show to everyone. Yes, that's great. Yes, that's very enjoyable. I'm not gonna lie, it does feel good to have a successful painting and have people say, oh, that's a great painting. It feels good. But that's not the main reason you should be painting. You should be painting because you just love the day in, the day out process of getting better. And I promise you, if, if you make that your focus and you make that why you paint, you will paint more, you won't ever stop painting, and you won't ever stop getting better. And painting will always be enjoyable and fulfilling. All right, hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Paint Talk. If you did, you know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. If you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.